Why is it that in practice we seem to have so much trouble losing fat when all the advertisements and media make it seem like it's so easy? Do this for 10 weeks. Fat loss hack. 30 second fat burner. Shred fat fast. Skirting the truth at best. Straight up misinformation and false promises at worst. I'm sorry to tell you folks, it takes a bit of work and it takes some time. But in this video, I'm going to teach you how to actually get rid of your stubborn fat. The first thing we need to talk about is what is stubborn fat exactly and why is it so difficult to lose? Before we move on, language is important and stubborn fat is somewhat of a colloquialism. What we really want to talk about is subcutaneous fat versus visceral fat. Subcutaneous fat is the fat that you carry just underneath your skin and aesthetics notwithstanding in terms of overall health, it's relatively benign as just a stored form of energy. But it's when our body fat starts getting north of, say, mid-20s for men, low 30s for women, that more and more of our fat deposition starts to become that visceral fat. And visceral fat is very bad, folks. This is where the majority of the negative outcomes from high adiposity in terms of health and longevity come from. Now, there's actually some good news in the context of this conversation in terms of losing stubborn fat. First of all, perspectives, okay? If your body fat is above, say, 25% as a man, 30% as a woman, and of course there's some individual variation in this, when you begin a diet and exercise program, you're going to start to see your fat come off of you in this order, generally speaking. The order being, it's going to start distally, as in arms and legs, forearms and calves, and then on into your torso. Then both men and women will start to see some upper body leanness, shoulders, traps, upper back, a little bit of chest. And then right here is where the whole stubborn fat comes into play. For men, this can be somewhere between like 15 and 20% body fat for women somewhere between like 20 and 25 percent and biological sexual phenotype is going to strongly affect this fat distribution and therefore what is contextually stubborn for a man versus a woman this is the point at which women might find some increasing difficulty losing fat around the hips the glutes whereas men will start to find difficulty losing that last bit of belly fat now, before we move on to actually getting rid of the stubborn fat, I want to explain why that order of operations occurs from distal to proximal, and then the gender distribution, and then finally the stubborn fat. Your extremities don't have a lot of fat to begin with, and you're always moving them around so they get a decent amount of blood flow, pathology notwithstanding. So they seemingly lose fat at a much greater rate than the rest of you. That's why fat comes off there first. Taking it one step in, you can say the same about your shoulders, upper back, chest to some extent. But now here's the thing. If you were previously obese, and by obese, I'm not talking about BMI because we know that that doesn't necessarily accurately reflect adiposity, but just objectively obese in terms of adiposity. Like, you're north of 35% as a female, north of, you know, 30% as a male. That visceral fat that you have around your organs is extremely detrimental to your health. Type 2 diabetes, dyslipidemia, a whole bunch of negative health outcomes come from holding on to too much visceral fat. So you're thinking to yourself, I'm dieting, I'm exercising, I'm doing all this stuff. Why do I not visually in the mirror seem to be losing any fat? The thing is, is you are, your fat loss didn't stop. It's just that you have a lot of fat inside you around your organs that's got to go first. And that's going to take priority over you getting a six pack abs or you having like, you know, toned glutes. That last bit of subcutaneous fat on your belly, men, on your hips and glutes, women, is actually the last thing to go because that's an anti-starvation mechanism. That's like your, in case of emergencies, break open glass fat. 
and it's subcutaneous. It's not around your organs. It's just sitting underneath your skin on the outside. And so it's not negatively impacting your health. It's literally just a stored energy reserve. Now, going back to why the hips and glutes for females, that's actually estrogen doing you a favor and doing some crosstalk with lipoprotein lipase, which is an enzyme that is relevant in how fat is distributed in your body. And it is doing everything possible to keep you from having additional visceral fat to number one, preserve your health, and number two, to allow for there to be more torso room in the event that you have to make another human. Estrogen influencing fat distribution in this way is one of the reasons why women with healthy hormone profiles typically trend lower in things like cardiovascular disease, MI, atherosclerotic symptoms, these kinds of things. I mentioned before in previous videos, but females actually have superpowers and a lot of them come from the fact that they have a lot of estrogen. Estrogen is actually not a sandbag. It's absolutely essential for optimal health. But that notwithstanding, now that we kind of understand the process, how do we get rid of the stubborn fat? <laughs> well, that's the easy part, folks. It's the one thing that nobody wants to do, which is just stay consistent. You're not going to lose stubborn fat in 10 weeks. You're not going to lose stubborn fat with a 30 second ab workout or exercising specifically in this manner three times a week. You're going to need a calorie deficit. It doesn't have to be a big one, but it has to be meaningful. And you're going to have to do some kind of exercise. And furthermore, your food choices and training effect from the exercise have to do more than just reduce slash burn calories. But if you have some kind of underlying pathology from years of poor food choices and or adiposity, like insulin resistance, for instance, your diet and training are going to have to consistently work against that as well. But the real simple nuts and bolts answer, folks, is time. When you find something that works, you got to grind it out, not for 10 weeks, not for 10 months, but you got to grind it out for a meaningful period of time. You have to make it a lifestyle choice. And that's how you get rid of the stubborn fat. There's a million different ways you can lose weight, folks. But if you want to actually get rid of the stubborn fat and keep it off, managing stress, good food choices, and exercise have to be a part of your day-to-day -day life. Thanks for watching.